Okay, uh, can anybody who's listening hear me? I'm just gonna do a brief explanation of what I'm doing. Why don't you guys look at my web browser? <clears throat> can you hear me? Anybody? So I'm probably going to, hi, I don't know all these people, some of them. So um, I, does anybody have any questions about what I'm doing or is this a bunch of people who've already seen all this stuff that I was doing last week and I'm continuing to do this week? Is there any general like, what are you doing? What, are you what am I doing? I don't know. Someone just needs to say, what are you doing? Otherwise, I'll presume I don't need to explain everything. But I, I'm perfectly willing to go into an explanation of what I'm doing. First time to watch the stream session for me. Okay, so um, what I am doing is I am working with our, in our world editor, which is a little crashy right now. Uh, it tends to run out of memory, and it's just one of those things that I can totally work with in the meantime. So priority-wise, not a terribly bad issue. It basically means that as I continue editing, eventually it crashes. So you'll see me kind of stop and save or pull my hair out or something like that. Uh, so what I'm doing is, this is the first time we've kind of built out a zone in a uh, much more of a by hand manner. Uh, most of this, oh, hold on. 
Hi, honey. I'm streaming right now. How's it going? Everything okay? Okay. Love you. Bye. Okay, so uh, this is one of the, the first maps that we've really done, done a lot of hand editing. Um, you can see that in these subdivision levels of terrain. Um, and what it does is it loads between different subdivisions. And every one of these ones that's orange versus white has been touched by somebody. Um, obviously, this isn't the um, fastest way of doing things in a world editor, but um, we haven't had the time yet or prioritized uh, tools like brushes and stuff. Um, so, as this isn't a huge map, uh, we're, we're winging it with what we got. Um, so what I've been doing is going in and hand placing all these assets. Um, this is the big place power model, so you're actually only like this big when you're standing in here. Um, and what we're doing is creating uh, a kind of a play space for testing and battles and our scenario director. And this whole thing is built around uh, kind of two overlapping triangles where each realm starts in a corner, um, one, two, three, and then progresses uh, to, f to fight amongst themselves for all these points, which are marked by like the dragon skull over here, the hand, uh, there's, where am I? So each one of these is a point here, 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 here. There's the center point. Uh, we haven't built all the mechanics yet, but that's going to involve a kind of a capture the flag mechanic. Um, and right now the, the map is, is, you'll notice it's kind of open. Uh, it's fairly simple on purpose because we are not doing a lot of work right now uh, making a bunch of AI code. So the NPC AI just kind of runs in a line straight to their next target. Um, and ideally, we get a, you know, we want to get a few hundred players in here to test this. So it, it is more open than you would think for, say, like a, a game that typically might have 50 people in it. Um, the goal of this is to try several hundred um, and see how it performs. Um, part of this is next week we've got a whole bunch of, we're going to focus on some of the performance in this, so I'm real quickly trying to get in stuff. Um, in some cases I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to do like a perfect polish pass, I'm just trying to get these things in so that uh, we can just kind of see what performance is and look at one of my concerns right now is how many, much uh, texture memory we have. Uh, you put a, several hundred people in there, you very quickly will uh, run out of uh, texture space. So what I am doing is I've, I've duped a mod, uh, a mod, um, here I'll pull this over. This is the uh, um, terrain mod editor creator. Um, so this, each one of these is basically a set of instructions on what to do um, with the terrain, what objects to spawn on it, everything like that. So, there's, like this one's a little more complex. This is duped three times right now with just some small changes. And this is the what the corner is. So there's some stuff out on the side here that's not hooked up. Um, but all this stuff that you see a bunch of lines in between is is telling it what to do. Um, so what I am doing right now, come on, come on. What I'm doing right now is going in and selecting points on the map to um, open them up more for gameplay. So this is all green right now because what I did is in the Viking mod, or in the Thurian mod, uh, I attached to the whole thing just a green texture so I could see where where all the trees and everything are coming from. So there's what I did is I put like one big mod down and I'm working on top of it. So the way this works is it blends everything together. So it can cause problems, um, which is what I was working on over here where I've got this one fucking tree right there. It was just like, no, I'm a happy tree. I'm gonna stay right here. So I'm assuming it's, it's coming in from this green spot here. So I just have to get rid of that. Um, there's a bug right now which will not initially show the mods assigned to a subdivision level until you wiggle one of the points. Really, that wasn't one of the points. Where's one of the points that I've assigned? So I'll just get blown out. So then it'll start um, adding stuff in. And the whole corner 
as some reason I get more crashes. So that's shitty. So what I'm doing is going in and selecting those points and saying, okay, over here I want you to be a cobblestone path. Over here I want you to be open ground. Um, and I've duped the same visuals, the same mods, and renamed them so that if we want to change them, if we find out we've got enough space, I can say, oh, the Vikings have a bunch of grass. I can make their cobblestone road look different later. Um, so right now I'm just trying to get in as much of what my intent is uh, so that we can kind of look at where the performance is next week. Um, So that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, some of this is hand placing. All of these objects are hand placed. Um, and then I work on just trying to blend them in. Hey, Dion, are you updating some of those edge pieces? Okay, make sure and check the, the, the groups and go into the model and update the groups too, the components, like the refresh components. Are you looking at it in the model editor after you upload it? And you're, you're, okay. Yeah, there's. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does that. So, why do we this to be on the Alright, then I'm, you think I'm just getting like a half a patch? Yeah, it's a Okay. Okay. Uh, I was referring to the fact that uh, there's a bunch of geometry missing right here on this piece. It's supposed to be a bunch of spiky rocks poking out and it's all missing right here. Um, and then, you know, we start getting into more details like over here. I spent a little bit of time just trying to figure out this corner. Um, like I said, unfortunately, I have to wiggle a bunch of shit. To find one that's actually got my mod that I'm looking for. There it goes. So what we're doing is keeping this fairly open, and what I'm trying to do is kind of blend the forest out. Uh, <clears throat> so in this case, I was just kind of experimenting over here. Um, I'd like there to be more trees, but I will probably end up hand placing those simply because since we're doing so much by hand work, changing the terrain mod to include more trees uh, procedurally could just cause me a, a lot of headache. Um, so in this case, this is the Arthurian corner. You start about here. And what I want to do is, I was just talking about this with Michelle last night, is get a couple of screenshots of like this shot and maybe have her do some work on the middle here, like maybe some, you know, buttressed walls of, you know, castle stone with some statues holding it or something. Just something to kind of liven that up. I mean, there's a lot of things I would still like to do in this map from the fact that I still want to get little pebbles on the ground to, you know, working on these big pieces like over here that are just kind of like framing elements sitting in the back. Um, so right now, like I said, I was working on the Viking area just trying to identify the areas where all the bushes and trees are spawning. That's why it's green. And then you can see I'm starting to build a path where those things hopefully will not encroach into the path, except this little motherfucker. 
Um, so I just have to figure out things like this, like this little green spot here. I have to find the subdivision level in this area. And let's add the open ground mod for the Vikings. There we go. Tree gone. Hooray. Uh, and then probably these little spots here are subdivision level three. So like I said, we will eventually have to build some tools there, but uh, we are focusing on everything we need to do for beta one right now. Um, part of that for me is getting as much as I can done today so that we can do a push of this and do a new build. Uh, we'd like to do more testing on it and then I can get started on some of the home island um, pieces. Clearly, I didn't assign it at this level. Um, kidding me? One thing about the um, terrain code. So this little shadow. It's probably being included. So anyway, um, that's what I'm doing. And the idea is then you would come out here and wrestle with your enemies. Um, so a lot of this stuff is all procedural, like all these little plants that spawn, little bits of grass and everything. None of that is, is of course, hand placed or even hand painted. Um, that is all set up in this smaller window that you guys are looking at with all these nodes. Uh, for instance, this is all these little bits of grass. This is referencing a bunch of trees and logs and things. This is separating out birch trees, birch saplings, bushes, more bushes. So yeah, that's basically what I'm doing. Do I have birches in there twice? Why do I have two multis here? So yeah. And of course, it's very interesting when you go into someone else's mod that they've made, because they don't arrange things the way you do. Ben has it all twisty, and it drives me nuts. I like to lay mine all out. Um, so yeah, uh, you're just going to see me go through. Um, what I'm trying to do right now, very quickly, is get all the spiky rocks set up around here, uh, here, and get a version of the mod for the TDD over here. I really want to do this big tree thing. That also requires me doing a bunch of big trees, so I may take them out now and put them in back later uh, when I'm working on the other islands. Uh, one of the cool things about the system is if we build a new little mod, I can just say, put that mod here. Uh, and actually, just for fun, for anybody who hasn't seen it, I will illustrate that because it's fun to watch. So like here, let's see, where's this being applied? Where did I apply this? Okay. So right here, so what this is going to do is blend all in this area. This mod right here will warp in. This will put down a version of what like you see in the other corners. And I have it doing very little warping to the terrain just because I don't want to mess up any of the gameplay stuff. A lot of these rocks we, we fuck with by hand. Um, so in this case, like, if I wanted to, I could go in and you know, change this to be all grass for the TDD area. Like I said, I'm, I'm not doing that right now. I just want to kind of get a bunch of stuff in before I make variations on these mods. And the cool thing is, is this mod, this setup can be assigned anywhere in the game. I can mix and match it with other stuff. Uh, fairly cool to be able to do stuff quickly. The only prohibitive part is the um, hand assignment. That's kind of a pain in the ass right now. So I'm going to stop talking with my explanation. Um, Uh, Sackrich is asking a question about will all islands in the open world be procedurally generated or just sections? Um, 
the majority of it is going to be procedurally generated just simply because of the size of the amount of terrain we want to make. I mean, ultimately, a very large portion of this is procedurally generated. This map in particular, the only difference is just specifically me saying where those those pieces go. So at this point in time, we don't want to do too much of that because it's time consuming. But once we get tools in, it'll be a little bit easier just to say, oh, this you know, plot where we put this castle that everybody's contesting is problematic where we've put it. We're going to just smooth out this little area and put it down. Or uh, one of the things Andrew wants to do is so that if you pick up a model or an asset or an entity like a, a plot or something, that it would gen it would do something to the terrain around it. So the idea would be like I could put a plot down and it picks the open dirt plot, you know, ground. Um, or I could take a pine tree and drop it down and it puts pine ground and needles and pine cones and shit on the ground. Um, I'm going to put Mike's little effects in here. Let's do that right now. There's a sound file. It should be in here. Where's the sound file? Here's the sound file. So that's a big uh, 200 meter ambient loop that plays around this thing. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to stop talking because I actually need to get a bunch of shit done. Uh, and I'm just trying to get as far as I can today um, so that I can kind of push this off and come back to it later for like a polished performance pass. Because um, there's obviously, you know, art you never really want to stop and you want to keep doing stuff. But I want to get this into the point that we know whether performance wise I'm just adding too much. Ooh, that's the missing piece, Dion's um, so apologies if this crashes a bunch. I don't know why it seems to crash more. I mean, it's crashed on me maybe twice this morning and it's already twice during the stream. So... What's that square for? Uh, the squares are markers right now. Um, the squares, if you see one of these squares, they were, they're markers, like there used to be a lot of squares in here, Ben just kind of marked out where he wanted things. So this is just a marker for the control point so that it lines up. There's another control point on the other side over there. This might be a little problematic. I might be getting NPCs stuck in this wall here. I'm gonna have to push it back. Um, yeah, and the, the, the these things are going to be replaced by an actual, like, big dais that you'll, you know, have VFX on. It'll be clear, like, oh, I have to go stand in that thing. Right now, it's uh, marked by, like, four of the, the plot flags around it. Um, but ultimately, the end goal with this, um, we're building... We're, we're built, we've built several different systems to create scenarios and also create gameplay elements that we didn't have before and a system to make those gameplay elements talk to each other. Uh, Caleb's currently working on that, Andrew's been working on it, um, and what that will do is allow us to do the capture the flag mechanics where you can uh, run down into the center here, uh, catch, pick up this big crystal, put it on yourself. The, there, <laughs> these are things you don't think about in games until you actually walk through all the steps that need to be completed. Put it on yourself. We put a VFX on the character that was previously on the crystal. Then you will need to run it to one of your points that you own and you drop it into a receptacle, this thing that will hold it. And it's kind of like a battery. And then that battery will allow you to spawn an extra NPC. So the idea would be like, if you can get you know several of these crystals over there, you will be put, getting more NPCs to help you just push forward and take more points. Um, and yeah, that's not it yet, but it's fun. It'll be cool. Um, and the other thing we're going to do is, um, I realize this is fairly Spartan, and you know, I've got a, a lot of light and dark stuff in here. It all is going to look different, different times of lighting. We're still going to do another lighting pass after beta, probably. Uh, try and fix some of the issues that we have before beta. And what else? Uh, I'm going to give Michelle some time just to poke at this, like I would if I had the time and kind of just conceptualize what would it look like with different colors you know we want all the terrain here to be gray not tan you know what works best and she'll poke at that and figure it out uh, Dion is currently working through these guys these these rocks that are all on the edge are mostly one big set 
um, like, you know, they're several meters long. And then I, right here, you can see I've started to push and put another one in. And I want to make sure that these are something that players can run around on like butter and not get stuck on anything. Uh, so she's working on a rough pass of the collision really quickly right now. And then is going to go in and add some of... These guys aren't done. I would really like to do more with this whole centerpiece. It's just a lot of work. Um, so if I get time, we'll come back to this and kind of integrate it a little bit more to the way we've changed the rocks and the rest of the zone. For the sake of argument, though, it still totally structurally works. Um, so she's going to go in and put some of these rough V effects that Mike put in, which I really like. They're these kind of like wispy, uh, like lights and things that shift around the crystals. And I think if I turn from the time of day, you can see it better. And the crystals need a glow on them. I don't think we put the glow on yet. But they do this interesting kind of magic -y, misty thing, which I think looks really neat. Right, Mike? Make it darker. Ooh, that's neat. What the fuck is that? You need a stream, man. That is neat. Is that off of one of her concepts? Concepts? Looks like the void energy. Exactly. It literally looks like maybe like that void circle or something. So what you guys are missing is Mike's. Every time I turn that camera, nobody can see them. You can see the glow, but you probably have to make it dead night before you actually see the glow map on the crystals. Is it really dim right now? Well, it's just the way the glow maps work. You have to. It has to be super dark before you. Can so, see it. so I actually, I put an alt, an alt. I called it like a alt. Yeah. Different material on these that I copied from the other ones the outside ones just in case like Ben was like oh I want them all to be purple and the inside ones to be the stay the same so those yeah, actually yeah, have I a different put, material on them I have twin glow maps on everything I found which said crystal uh, so I, I did it on okay well all I see is the lighting of the 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 light volume I think that's around it doing stuff Are you looking in the editor? I am in the editor okay, I don't does it do something funky in the editor because, I mean, I don't see a glow on the crystal. If you go in the hatchery, they definitely glow. You're getting some weird, blinky, no alpha. Well, we've determined the editor is not the same as the world. So I could, I don't know what to tell you. But they definitely glow. It's just that the way the glow maps work now is that they tend to get washed out during the day. I was trying to make it so that when the, when the crystals were in shadow, that you'd be able to see that they're actually glowing while they're in shadow. But the settings that I had previously to achieve that don't seem to work. Okay. So we'll have to, we'll have to talk to George. Because What's this? When I set the glow multiplier up to like 12, which is what I did before, so that you could see them in shadow during the day, that makes them. I swear a bunch of stuff Ben placed moved. Because there's all these crystals, like these pieces that are all right on top of each other right here. And it doesn't seem like something Ben would have done. And this guy's like right in the middle of gameplay. Yeah, he didn't lock any of these when he placed them, which makes me wonder if there's a bug. I actually saved a screenshot for just this occasion. You're able to click and drag stuff. Yeah, so see this little cluster right here up in the corner is where I'm at. And I took this yesterday, but th none of this makes sense. I don't I mean, I don't think Ben did this. I think these moved. I think there's a bug where if you don't lock them or something, they move because all this shit looks like it moved. Okay, so you guys are getting the front row seat to game development, which I don't know if anybody has told you is difficult. You have to love hard work. It's easy. And swarmy, sexually explicit co-workers. Oh. 
Oh, so um, you guys, if if anybody's into buildings and you missed Andrew's stream, you should look at that. Um, yesterday, one of the things we've been, one of the big hurdles is just getting building performance up. And I'm sorry about the flicker. That's just one of the problems with the other. Um, the stream from yesterday has a whole bunch of really cool networked uh, building updates that are tick, 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 the building constantly changing with his guy standing on it. Uh, and it's all networked and it's really sexy with just how fast it's updating, which is cool because the likelihood anything's going to be updating that fast is pretty slim because you're not going to be able to just knock down a wall as fast as is occurring in, in his little uh, work that he was showing off yesterday. So you check that out. One of the next things we're going to do is start putting buildings back into some of these big scenes and see how they behave. Uh, but we got to get through all the other bugs and stuff we're working on right now. Yeah, this all has to be an accident. I don't think Ben would be silly enough to put all this just sitting the way it was. So I will have to play a game designer. So, And is out today. Okay, I'm going to get some coffee and do can you see it in the game? The glow map? I mean, it's entirely possible I haven't gotten a material update or something. Okay, so those certainly have a glow on them. Yeah, it must not be working in the better. I'm going to stop talking and get coffee and stop saying I'm going to stop talking and get back to work. Um, I think I said what is neat. That was Mike's working on VFX over there. Um, and he's doing some really cool stuff, even though we don't have all the fancy tech uh, that, you know, we, there's other shaders and stuff that we want to build. There's other tools we want to build, uh, but we also have to be extremely careful of just our budget for rendering. We want to have a high frame rate during large battles. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know, we're talking like thousand player battles, which we've been doing and showing off. There it is, pitch black. Yeah, so it looks like it's got a glow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it only needs to be subtle. I think what we may want to do is. Did she put the, the light? Okay, it does light up around it. Yeah, the effect. The I'll go into the game and show the you guys. Lights in it. It just needs to be tweaked so it's not too much. What am I looking for?
Thank you.
Thank you.